Welcome back to English Made Easy. I'm Milen. This channel is dedicated to creating easy and interesting lessons so that you can improve your English in an enjoyable way. Today's video is a special request. Some of you wanted me to work out question two on page 81 of the new Mulberry English course, course book five by Anahita Lee. So I have worked out three examples for you. The first one is based on the examples given in the textbook. The second and third are entirely my own. While I have used rhyming words in the first and second examples, the third example does not have rhyming words. The question indicates that you do not need to have rhyming words, but I just prefer to use them in two examples just to make the little verse livelier. Might I also point out that the answers that I have worked out in this video are by no means the only correct answers. I am only giving you examples of what you can do if you let your imagination run wild. So I hope that this video will answer your questions and help you to discover your own examples as well. If you like what I prepared for you, do hit that like button. And if you have not already subscribed to English Made Easy, kindly do so without any hesitation, as that will help you to get notified each time I post new content. So then let's get on with it without any delay. Here we are having fun with hyperbole. So just to refresh your memory, what is a hyperbole? A hyperbole is an exaggerated statement. You cannot take it literally. Here's an example of a hyperbole for you. My uncle is taller than a skyscraper. Now that is just not possible. Look at the skyscraper. Skyscrapers have about 40 stories. So no man can possibly be, leave alone as tall as a skyscraper. No one can possibly be taller than a skyscraper. It is highly exaggerated. It is a highly exaggerated statement. And so it is an example of a hyperbole. Okay, because this is exaggerated. My uncle is taller than a skyscraper. Never ever possible. And now let's go to the question in the book. Let's work on question two on page 81 of New Mulberry English Course, Course Book 5 by Anahita Lee. And this is what the question states. After you take turns at the game, try writing some hyperboles of your own. Some examples have been given in italics. Use your imagination and write. It does not matter if your lines do not rhyme. I'm repeating that it does not matter if your lines do not rhyme. So you don't have to look for rhyming words. You can just let your imagination run wild when you do this exercise. So here's what it is. And you have to fill in the blanks according to the directions given in the brackets. So let's go through it one at a time. Softer than a, uh, and in this case, in this first example, I have used the words that they have given in brackets. So softer than a, uh, and it says a sound from nature. So I'm going to use these words, a uh, gentle breeze. So softer than a gentle breeze. Second one, softer than a, uh, and they say sound made by an animal. And they've given an example, which I'm going to use in this case. An ant's tiny sneeze. And so I have to remove a from there. Softer than an ant's tiny sneeze. Right? Look at the next one, softer than a, a sound from an imaginary creature or a character from a book or TV program. 
So what I've thought of is softer than a baby who's whimpers. So who's a who? Do you know who a who is? Sounds funny, doesn't it? But yes, who is a character from a book? The who's live in Whoville. You will find the character in Horton Hears a Who by Dr. Seuss. A very interesting story. And who's are very tiny and they live within a snowflake. So I've chosen this character. Softer than a baby whose whimpers. Whimper is a sound that uh, a baby makes. Or a dozen. Or a dozen what? Now you have to use a sound made by a group of people. So obviously it has to be a soft sound. So what I've chosen is tiny whispers. A whisper is very soft, isn't it? Like this. A whisper. A tiny whisper. So softer than a dozen tiny whispers. And softer than a something. Which means a person doing work could be a baker, a gardener, a policeman, a teacher, or anyone else doing some work. And what I chose is gardener harvesting leeks. Do you know what leeks are? Leeks are plants like onions. It's a vegetable. Uh, harvesting means collecting. So you can imagine a gardener plucking a leek out of the ground. He's collecting the leeks that he has planted a long time ago. So that would actually be quite soundless, right? So let me read through the whole thing again. Softer than a gentle breeze, softer than an ant's tiny sneeze, softer than a baby whose whimpers, or a dozen tiny whispers, softer than a gardener harvesting leeks. That's how softly my brain speaks. Interesting example. Let's go to the next one then. The same question. Let's see what we can put in here. And in this case, I'm not going to copy the first and second one from the brackets. I'm going to write them all on my own. And they're going to rhyme for this example only. Although the question did state that it was not necessary to rhyme, but I chose to rhyme. Okay. Softer than a gurgling stream. A stream of water, the sound that the water makes when it's flowing. It's, it's like a gentle, beautiful sound. You can hardly hear it. Softer than a mosquito scream. Now, I don't think any of you have ever heard a mosquito screaming. So this is like a nonsense thing. And so I've left my imagination to imagine whatever it could possibly imagine. And so I've chosen to write mosquito scream. You can do that. Just just let your imagination run wild. So softer than a mosquito scream. You know how tiny a mosquito is. Even if a mosquito actually had to scream, how loud do you think that could possibly be? You would never hear it. So softer than a mosquito scream. Softer than Blinky's hum. And because Blinky is a proper noun, I have removed A from there. So softer than Blinky's hum. Now, who on earth is Blinky? Do you know him? He's a red ghost. He's the leader of the ghost gang in Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. And hum, hum means a low, steady sound like that made by a bee. So imagine Blinky, who is a ghost, is humming. A ghost humming like that. It's very soft because he's a ghost. Softer than that too. So softer than Blinky's hum, or a dozen students in a classroom chewing gum. I could have said students chewing gum, but it was more effective to say students in a classroom chewing gum. Do you know why? Because if the students in a classroom are chewing gum, they will make sure that there is no sound coming from their mouths. Or the teacher will catch them and ask them to spit it out. And hence, students in a classroom chewing gum. Softer than a beautician's 
powder techniques. Can you imagine that? Imagine that you went to a beauty parlor and the beautician is putting powder on your face. Would you be able to hear any sound from that? I don't think so. Barely, isn't it? Now let me read the entire second example to you again. Softer than a gurgling stream. Softer than a mosquito's scream. Softer than Blinky's hum. Or a dozen students in a classroom chewing gum. Softer than a beautician's powder techniques. That's how softly my friend speaks. Now, if you cannot hear a beautician uh, putting powder on your face, imagine if you would ever be able to hear your friend speaking. You wouldn't, right? And now coming to the third example. And like I told you earlier, the third example has words that do not rhyme, which you can do. The question allows you to do that. So here's what I thought of. Softer than a floating cloud. You've all seen clouds in the sky. And when a cloud is floating in the sky, do you hear any sound coming from it? Not at all, right? The cloud doesn't make any sounds when it's floating. Softer than an alligator's hiss. So you remove A from there because I'm using an in this case because alligator starts with A the vowel sound, and so we have to use an there. So softer than an alligator's hiss. What's an alligator? A large reptile that looks like a crocodile. And a hissing sound is the kind of sound that a snake would make. Something like that. So softer than an alligator's hiss. Softer than a pop from Nemo. Who's Nemo? I'm sure everyone knows who Nemo is. Nemo is a young clownfish in Finding Nemo, right? And a pop is a sound that fish make normally. Nemo is a fish, so uh, Nemo would make a sound like a pop. Fish make different types of sounds. Pop is one of the sounds that a fish would make. So softer than a pop from Nemo, a tiny little fish. You can imagine if you had a tiny fish in your aquarium and tried to listen to the sounds that that fish makes, you would not hear anything, would you? No, but they do make sounds. So softer than a pop from Nemo or a dozen disappointed sighs. Disappointed when someone is disappointed, when someone's not happy about something, then they would sigh like did you hear that emitting or giving out a deep breath to express sadness relief etc like but softer than that of course i had to be a little loud so that you might be able to hear me but you're not supposed to hear a dozen disappointed signs softer than a librarian collecting books why librarian because when you go to a library, you're supposed to be absolutely quiet in the library. So a librarian will have silence around her. Now imagine in a quiet library, you go back to return your book and the librarian takes the book from you. How much of noise do you think would come from that? Barely anything, right? Even if there was a little bit of noise, it would be hardly audible. Now let me read the entire third example to you one more time. Softer than a floating cloud. Softer than an alligator's hiss. Softer than a pop from Nemo or a dozen disappointed sighs. Softer than a librarian collecting books. That's how softly my friend speaks. And I'm pointing it out to you again that I have not used rhyming words in this example. Although I have used rhyming words in the previous two examples. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I also hope that I have been able to answer all the questions that you had.
And I hope that you liked my little verses, three examples. Don't forget to try and work out your own examples as well. Don't forget also to check out The Big Friendly Giant, which is also from the same textbook. And I'm quite sure that you will like that story just as much. So do check it out when you have time. For now, I'll say bye and until we meet again, see you.